Paddle Echoes has partnered with Black Bobbin, a Chicago guitar cafe offering a marketplace of gear and coffee. Enjoy a free 12-ounce bag of coffee with the purchase of any exclusive by entering code PEDALS during checkout at blackbobbin.com. Welcome, my name is Matthew Stevens and this is Pedal Echoes, a discussion about what pedals inspired an artist's creativity for new music. My discussion with Chris Robinson and Eric Braun from Caterpillars happened in the evening of January 5th, 2021. This is episode 12. Chris Robinson and Eric Braun are two-fourths of the band Caterpillars, a rock band from Austin, Texas. Chris and Eric are joined by Steven Osicki on drums and Ben Love on bass and backing vocals. Their third LP, Where Shadows Go to Speak, was released in August 2020 via Friend Club Records. Welcome to Pedal Echoes. Hey, Matt. Can you guys tell me how Caterpillars got started? I released two albums and an EP just of acoustic stuff of me. Then I got the opportunity to work with Ed Rose, who's, you know, produced the Appleseed cast and the Get Up Kids and kind of a, a staple in the emo genre as a producer. So this was in 2008. He was like, yeah, come up here and we'll do an EP. And originally I was just going to go by myself. And then we kind of delayed it a few months. And I was like, let me put a band together. And so I met two guys straight off of Craigslist. We had three months to do that EP, not only like write it together, but also like get to know these people that I just met. We spent three months working on it and then went up to Kansas to Ed Rose's studio and we recorded it in three days. And then after that album played just a ton of shows, then that kind of dissolved and I went on to play some other music for a while. I was always still working on Caterpillars, but kind of put it on the back burner. And then that's when kind of the Caterpillars that you see right now developed. And I met Ben and Steven in 2011 and we were playing shows all around Texas and we got to tour with Eric's band actually um, called Later Days. And that's how we, I met Eric. I couldn't have asked for a better person to join because Eric is also a, a gear nerd like me. The last album we recorded ourselves. So the album is about someone being in a coma and like fighting, fighting their way through dreams that they're having and trying to get back to reality. Eric mixed and mastered it. Now I feel like we've got a really strong team. Can you tell me about the pedals that were used in the recording of Where Shadows Go to Speak? Um, this is the first album where I didn't use pedals. This album, I had a, uh, a Kemper. It took me a while because I, I'm all about like, man, I should be recording through a real amplifier right now. Like, okay, this is legit. This thing just, you know, records amps and stores that information. But I really liked it. Then Eric showed me the Helix stuff. I'll, I'll try to add some color to that. Um, I have the HX effects which is the scaled down version of the full blown Helix floorboard. It's going to take a long time for me to not have a tube amp on stage. I have a custom made cab that actually used to belong to the rhythm guitar player in Joan Jett's band. Um, it's a really long story. I bought it in um, Bernie, Texas from like this old gentleman that had a really cool vintage shop and it's got two Frankenstein speakers in it and it only runs at eight ohms. It's very odd, but it sounds amazing. <laughs> but with regard to like pedals and stuff with the situation that we were in with where shadows go to speak, you know, Ben was, had moved to California at the time and Chris was in Burleson and I was in Austin. So, you know, obviously um, some challenges that were would have been challenges with or without a pandemic. Um, but we we kind of like set up a, a, an ability to have like a terabyte Dropbox. And, you know, we're, we're all savvy enough with Pro Tools to know how to like export audio files. But there was always that like proprietary like aspect of like, well, how do we get like raging ass guitar tones and all that? And I think that's kind of like when Kemper and Helix like came into play because it's a lot of work to sit there by yourself and like put like a, a condenser mic and a preamp on a cab. That's when we just decided to stick with like staying in the box and just see what could happen. Cause I, w I was confident enough that I was going to just like put all my money on black and just make the album sound awesome. Um, in whatever 
whatever way that took. And I was honestly unemployed at the time that we were doing the production on this album. It's really hard for me to be candid about like the effects on that record because there's so much going on with like a matchless model guitar tone. And then like every single guitar track has some amount of like Strymon modeled reverb on it. guitar tone on that record is its own unique sort of entity. Uh, I got weird and started trying to like mess with stuff that like the punk rock kid in me in, in like my earlier years would have just like never gone near, you know, like uh, like a duck delay, things like burst delays and stuff like that. And just really tried to be like as open minded as possible and just experiment as much as possible with this thing. So basically what he's saying is I didn't really do anything and he did everything. We didn't have any options, Matt. Like, <laughs> it was like not only aside from like the pandemic, but like being in, you know, three different parts of the country. Like, we just, we had to do what we had to do with what we had. And then, like, as things progressively got worse in the world, we kind of just realized that, like, let's just put this thing out, man. Like, people, like, we just felt like people needed something. Like, our friends would care if we did this. And we knew that, like, the, the concept of the record was cool. And we knew that, like, the songs were going to be good. And like, we just felt it was important to like get it out. So people had something to kind of like grasp onto and just like enjoy. I mean, I can, I can understand the apprehensiveness that artists, you know, may feel with releasing stuff during this time, but it's also like very therapeutic to release something during this time for people to, you know, have something to grasp onto. I think it was good for people and people need, need that entertainment. Yeah, definitely. We all live you know, far apart from each other. We don't know how we're going to be able to play music in the future. Until then, why not put this out? And, you know, we have no reason not to. It was really important for us too. like, it was important for us to like, be able to be creative. It was important to feel like we were still make some sort of impact with, you know, writing, creating, recording, move ahead in sort of a, a very bleak kind of nebulous environment of like even when stuff does come back like what's what's that going to mean for like an, an indie band what does that look like it was already hard enough before but like now there's going to be even less resources uh, we're not going to stop man i think that's that's what it comes down to at this point what well, can you tell me that caterpillars has coming up we don't really have anything coming up but we are writing what's probably going to be the next LP, still very much in the beginning stages, but learning from the last record going into this one. We both have new tools to work with. It'll be interesting to see where it goes. That's awesome. Well, thank you guys for being on Pedal Echoes. Okay, cool. To find out more about Caterpillars, please visit caterpillars.bandcamp.com or caterpillarstx.com. Where Shadows Go to Speak is available now. From the album Where Shadows Go to Speak, this is Tangents. Please like this video and subscribe to this channel. It goes a long way.